paper called Structural Interventions in Networks. And now, as you know, we had this uh, competition for uh, papers by junior scholars. And then some of the papers in that competition, we decided that 20 minute presentation is not good enough. Uh, so those papers needed more time. And so this is one of those papers which we felt that could not be presented in 20 minutes. The idea is interesting and rich. Uh, and so we wanted to give them an opportunity to present in the full session. So with that, uh, Yangsun, the floor is yours. You have one hour. We'll take questions as we go. And that's it. OK. So let me share the screen. OK. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Prof. And it's my honor to have opportunity to present our work here. Um, I'm Yang Sun. I graduated from National University of Singapore two years ago and joined Sichuan University. Uh, the, uh, this project joint work with Zhao Wei, who is my friend. He's a PhD candidate in HEC <coughs> Paris and my supervisor in NUS, Zhou Junjie. And the title of this paper is Structural Intervention in Networks. Mm. Okay, let me briefly introduce the motivations. Uh, many papers has highlighted the uh, impact of network structure on the decision of the economic subjectives. So network structure shapes the decision of the individuals. And when I say network, it's maybe some visible network, for example, the infrastru uh, infrastructure networks, airline railways, and some networks are um, invisible or abstract, for example, the friendship network or the collaboration among firms, it's also a network. And the network is crucial to explain different economic phenomena. For example, <coughs> for students, the efforts, for students, the efforts they choose to exert in studying is affected by his peers, the choice of his peers and Another uh, classical example is the Minkrit network. I will uh, mention it again later in detail. And the, um, the firm's choice in, in how much invest in the R&D, in the R&D still accounting for the choice of his opponent because of the R&D spillover. So as well as uh, competition among firms, it also, the structure of comp competition among firms also <clears throat> affects the firm's decision on the, for example, price or the, the investment. So uh, structural intervention on social times provides an important policy instrument for the social planner and to specify or identify the best way to intervene the network structures need deep understanding on how individual react to the structural interventions. And I need several examples here. Uh, the first one, sorry, the first one uh, is the classical example in delinquent uh, networks. The criminal behavior is a social phenomenon and accounting for the peer effects. So, uh, uh, arrest the criminals not only just make the criminal who who is who is arrested makes this criminal inactive. It also decreases the influence of this criminal to his peers. Uh, so identify the criminal is a classical policy uh, problem in network in network games. Another example I will mention uh, I will mention it in the subsequent part of this pre presentation is the integration of immigrants and the immigrants and the local society can be viewed as two isolated networks and the integration of immigrants can be viewed as the combination of two isolated networks and so. Um, several papers highlight the role of cultural leaders in the integration of immigrants. So the communication between cultural leaders can be viewed as building up bridges between the isolated networks. So how to select the key, uh, key cultural leaders connect, connecting who results in 
in increase the welfare the most uh, is another um, policy problem we will discuss later. Um, okay, for this paper, we analyze how individual responds to interventions. <coughs> uh, we quantify the impact of structural intervention on equilibrium behaviors and aggregate welfare. Um, this we use uh, and by adjacency uh, matrix G to re represent the original network. And this G represents the intensity of interaction among the individuals. In the original network, it's a network game. In the equilibrium X star, each individual choose, um, choose an equilibrium behavior according to their positions in the network. And a structural intervention is represented by a uh, and by matrix, a uh, same dimensional matrix C, and G plus C is a uh, post intervened network. And since the network structure is changed, the position of each individual in the network is changed. So the equilibrium choice of each uh, agent uh, of each player is changed. It's X hat star. And many theoretical papers then analyze some specific categories of structural <coughs> interventions. For example, um, Blaster et al. 2010 is a GEA paper. They analyze the role of each links in the delinquent network. So they identify the key links removing who result in decrease the decrease the uh, aggregate criminal activities the most. And um, building up links uh, is studied by Benglu and Endeavor. Uh, they analyze a linear quadratic model in which each player's behavior coincides with the eigenvalue centralities. And they analyze two isolated networks and building up a bridge the, to connect the isolated networks identify the, the, the key bridges. And this paper is an empirical paper. This, this is an empirical paper. They, they study the role of the business meetings. In fact, a firm can be viewed as a network consists of the workers due to the synergies among the workers. And this paper shows that the business meetings significantly improve the profits of the firms. In fact, the business meeting can be viewed as a platform in which the firm building up links, uh, building up links uh, across the firms, which uh, under the complementary effect, of course, increase the profit of the firms. Um, Another branch of literature, they study the efficiency network or the most active network. Uh, both of these two papers show that the efficiency or the most active network is nested, nested split graph. I skip the introduction of the, uh, I skip the introducing of nested split graph and it's a um, class of graph stru structures. And these two papers, they should giving a fixed number of links, the most efficiency network is nested split graph, and they derive their, their results by analyzing the link reallocation. Link reallocation is an intervention such that cutting, a, cutting or removing an existing link while building up another new links and whether such intervention can improve uh, welfare, this two paper, this two paper uh, analyze the link reallocation and show that the most efficiency network belongs to the uh, next split graph. And this is a classical paper, analyze the role of each player in the network, the impact of removal of nodes in, in the network. Mm. So all of these papers, they studying the structure interventions while they focus on a specific categories of structure intervention. And the, our paper will provide a general approach to analyze the structure intervention. So in fact, we can replicate their results by our approach 
and attend their results a little bit by our approach. Okay. Um, this is the difficulty of the analysis of structured intervention. The difficulty comes, comes from two dimensions. The first is the shock um, pro propagation. Um, when the intervention come, not only the players involved in the intervention. When I say the player involved in a structured intervention, it means the players who, uh, whose labors has been changed by the structure intervention. So not only these players involved in the intervention, their behavior, their equilibrium choice will change. The participation of their behavior will influence the response of their labors, including those who also, or including those who does not be involved in the intervention. And the participation of their labors will will, will uh, will affect the choices of their labor's labor. So the shocks, the shocks diffused through the network structure. All the players' uh, equilibrium behavior will change. This is what we call local perturbation have global effects here. And such effects is not homogeneous. Um, the structure intervention has a more significant impact on the player who allocates closer to the shock points uh, compared with the player who are far away. So the impact of the structure intervention uh, is not homogeneous. It depends on the depends on the distance between the players and the shock points. This too difficulties makes the analysis of structure intervention challenging. Um, this is our outline. We focus on linear quadratic model. In fact, players, plays, uh, players play a simultaneous move game. The action of players stand alone benefit on him and they are spill over. The marginal stand alone benefits is measure, is called characteristic. Uh, it's characteristic is measures the, the intrinsic marginal utility later you, you can see. And the intensity of spillover is described by a network. The network structure together with characteristics determines Nash equilibrium. And the social problem will, sen will select the best way to intervene the network structure to maximize a certain performance objective subject to a certain resource constraint. In, in our model, we in fact um, ignore the cost side of intervention. Here I said the certain resource constraint means that, or we model this certain resource constraint uh, by assume the limited ability of the social planner to intervene the network. For example, in the delinquent network, because of the limited of the, uh, police resource, the social planner can only arrest a few, um, con can only arrest some of the cr uh, cr criminals, not rather than all. And in the building up links case, because of the limited resources, the social planner can only build, uh, build up a new link, only one new link rather than Building up link uh, until the network become become becomes a complete graph. So we just model this certain resource constraint as exogenously giving limited ability to intervene the network structure. Mm. This is our theory results. We provide a general yet tractable approach to analyze the impact of structure intervention on individual's equilibrium behavior. Here we focus on the Kazablatsky centralities. Um, there are three features. Maybe I will uh, explain these three points in details later after I present our main results. Okay. And as applications, 
we use this approach to analyze two real life uh, problem. The first one identifies the most uh, wanted criminals in delinquent network, and the second is identify the key connector connectors for isolated communities. Mm. We construct the exact indexes to rank the impact of removal uh, impact of removing nodes or building up mean, building up bridges. And we analyze the analyze the, the properties of the of the exact index. Mm. Okay, this is introduction. Um, before we uh, before I introduce our model, let me introduce some notations. Uh, we use n by n matrix G to represent a network. And we focused on undirected and unweighted network. So G is the metric matrix with entries uh, zero or one and the, with diagonal elements being zero. We use B to denote the Kazabolaski centrality, uh, the inverse matrix multiplied by the, the, the weight theta, it's a vector. And we use M the inverse matrix of I minus delta G uh, to, we use M to represent this inverse matrix. I just um, remark one point here. The M, the MI elements of this matrix, the MI elements of this matrix just count the aggregate passes starting from I and at J with length discount delta. So, Mm, this is the geometric explanation of the entries of this matrix. Uh, so the Kazabolaski centrality just counts the aggregate passes starting from this node and at other nodes with length discount delta. Uh, just introduce two notations. One is B, another is M. We will use uh, later. Uh, this is our benchmark model. It's classical linear quadratic form, uh, utility form. Um, there are n players, and each player just selects a, a positive number, uh, select a positive number to denote his efforts, giving an effort profile. And the utility of the agents is given by this equation. The first term. The first term uh, is the intrinsic utility. So the theta i is the marginal in intrinsic utility. And here we call the player's characteristics. Theta is player's characteristics. The second term is the physical cost of exerting efforts. The last term is interaction term. Delta measures the strings of network effects. Here we assume delta is a positive number, so this is a complementary network game. Mm. This is our benchmark model. Later, you can see it's easy. Um, it's easy to extend their this model to reverse uh, linear quadratic form. Um, by first order condition, this is the best response of the players and the fixed points. Oh, sorry, by the way, uh, to guarantee the, the, the Blasky centrality is well defined, you can see here, delta cannot be too large. In fact, the delta should be smaller than the inverse of the largest eigenvalue of matrix G. So throughout this paper, we assume that Blasky centrality is well defined uh, before and after structural interventions. I just omit these assumptions, just the data cannot be uh, too large, uh, such that the Kaza Blasky centrality is well defined. This is a, an assumption throughout this paper. And under this assumption, uh, Blaster at all they show that the, in the equilibrium, each player's choice coincide with his weighted Blasky centralities. Um, this is the classical results 
which indicates that the more central players are more active in equilibrium. Um, this paper, we focused on the comparative aesthetics of interventions, intervention on characteristics as well as structures. First, let me, uh, <clears throat> let me show you what is characteristic intervention. A characteristic yeah, intervention. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 what is the interpretation of theta? Theta is given and exogenous. Theta is exogenously given for each agent, and that defines mm -hmm. because that only theta is only uh -huh. uh, the first part, right? So that only affects an agent's effort mm -hmm. for themselves and not for the network. Uh, yes, theta is a marginal utility. Only affects the uh uh. Uh, theta is irrelevant with the network, and the uh, characteristic can be intervened by subsidy or tax, uh, taxing on the choice of individuals. And is there anything required on the relationship between theta i and delta? Theta and delta? No. Theta i and delta, yeah? Uh, no. Uh, we just assume delta cannot be too large such, such that the centrality is the standard. Yeah, the standard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm, a characteristic intervention just change the characteristic vector theta to theta plus delta theta. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, so this vector delta theta represents a characteristic intervention. And the network structure remains the same, does not change. And what's the impact of a characteristic intervention? Um, the characteristic intervention does not target on all players. So some players' characteristic does not change. We're just relabeling the, play the players such that the players who involved in the intervention um, are ranked uh, after the players who does not involved in the characteristic intervention. So uh, this S is a set of players who involved in the characteristic intervention. Their, their characteristics has been changed under the intervention. And the other player outside the S, their characteristic remain the same and we just rank them in front of S. So delta theta can be re rewritten as this block form. And S is a set of player involved in the intervention. So lemma one just categorize the impact of characteristic intervention. Giving an arbitrary characteristic intervention um, for any subset of players, the participation of their equilibrium choice is given by this form, just the M matrix multiplied by the amount of characteristic intervention. And let me explain this lemma in, uh, from the sing singleton case. Suppose S is a singleton, only player J's characteristic has been changed. So how player I react to such a characteristic intervention? Now A is another singleton set, uh, only exists one element I. So delta Xi equals to Mij multiplied delta theta J. Just the Mij multiply the amount of characteristic interventions. Mij captures the marginal contribution of J's characteristics on I's uh, equilibrium behavior. Um, and the characteristic intervention has a nice property that once there are, um, uh, once the characteristic intervention change multiple players' characteristics, and we just sum they up, sum they up, sum all players, sum the impact of all players' characteristic intervention on player I's equilibrium behavior, and this is the aggregate impact of this. Uh, characteristic intervention on player I's equilibrium behavior. Um, and MIJ is the sensitivity of player I's equilibrium choice 
corresponding to JS characteristics. And JS and JS um, unweighted Kazablaski centrality is a marginal contribution of JS characteristics to the aggregate activities. So Nima Wang states that MIJ is the sensitivity of ice uh, equilibrium choice to J's characteristic and BJ, the centrality of J is the sensitivity of aggregates uh, equilibrium action to J's characteristics. It's very simple to analyze the characteristic intervention. Structural intervention is more complicated. We use a matrix C here to represent a structural intervention Mm, and the characteristic vector remain the same. And we can also relabeling the players such that we use S to denote the player who involved in the, the structural intervention. It means that the player in S, in the set S, their labels has been changed under this structural intervention and other player outside the set S their labor does not change. And the structural intervention C can be rewriting as this form, this block matrix. Lemma two states that, Lemma two review uh, uh, equivalence between structure intervention and characteristic intervention. For any arbitrary structure intervention, we can find an endogenously determined characteristic intervention, delta theta cuta, uh, to replicate the equilibrium uh, after the structure intervention. So Nima 2 says a uh, structure intervention, um, sorry, Nima 2 states that the, for any structure intervention, there exists an outcome equivalent characteristic intervention to replicate the impact of structure interventions. And the network structure does not change. We only change the player's characteristics. Um, this is the intuition of Lima 2. It's very easy. This is the best response of the players in the linear quadratic model. And after the, the structure intervention G, change to G plus C. And we just combine theta and this term together, treat this term as a characteristic intervention, treat this term as delta theta. And the critical value of delta theta can be determined by the fixed points of uh, this equation. This equation comes from lemma one. You can see um, the left-hand side of this equality, left-hand side is the participation of players, of the participation of players in S, the uh, participation of players equilibrium choice in, involved in the intervention. And it's equals to the sensitivity matrix multiply the, the, the amount of interventions. And we can solve this linear equation system to pin down the critical value of delta theta. Nima 2 just states that structure intervention, we can uh, figure out uh, outcome equivalent characteristic intervention to replicate the, 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 the replicate the impact of structure intervention. Uh, Nima 1, and we combine Nima 1 and Nima 2, we can get population 1 after structure intervention, we can find an out outcome equivalent characteristic intervention that has theta such that the equilibrium participation of group A equals to the sensitivity matrix multiply the amount of the characteristic intervention. And this is the aggregate, this is the aggregate uh, action, the participation of aggregate, um, aggregate action. I will show you how convenience such translation is in when we analyze a real nice problem. And here I emphasize four points. The first is um, the quality here. You can see only group A's are involved in the structure intervention. 
and the outcome equivalent characteristic intervention is targeting an S as well. So only the players involved in the structure intervention, their characteristic will be changed in the corresponding outcome equivalent characteristic intervention. And the second point is here, proposition one, we use the centrality measure or the index in the original network to characterize the impact of characteristic intervention, uh, to characterize the impact of structure interventions. And this feature um, allow us to compare interventions easily. For example, there are two interventions, C, C1 and C2, and we can compare the impact of these two interventions by the index in the original network, by the index in the same resource, and it's easier to compare. And here, the start, start point is, we can see the uh, structure intervention affects the equilibrium non-linearly, and it's very complicated by translating the structure intervention to characteristic intervention can easy our computation of equilibrium. And the last point, uh, here we focus on the kaza blasky centralities, and we do the comparative statics on the uh, Blasky centralities. Well, it is applicable to analyze variance network models in which the NAS equilibrium is represented by a function of Kazablaski centralities. And let me end this part by provide a sufficient condition to guarantee that uh, intervention, uh, intervention increase the aggregate equilibrium action. This glory one just say that a structure intervention satisfy this inequalities. This, uh, this value is a positive number, then such structure intervention increase aggregate equilibrium action. Um, now that CIG um, is either, either positive one nor negative one or zero, though, which represents adding a link, CIJ is equals to one, or cutting or removing a link, CIJ equals to ne negative one, or does not change, CIJ equals to zero. Though. So this formula can be re re represented in this term. This term states that when the sum of products, when the sum of the products the sum of products of the centrality of the loads who are connected under this uh, intervention minus that of nodes whose, whose links has been removed in this intervention. When the nets of these two terms are positive, then such intervention will increase aggregate equilibrium action. And this result is powerful to identify the most active network. Um, for example, giving a fixed number of links, which network is the most active? Then we can consider a link reallocation such that we're removing the link IG and adding a new link KL. By this chlorine, we conclude that when the product of centrality of IJ smaller than that of KL, then such link reallocation increase aggregates uh, equilibrium action. And once we set I and J are identical, it's a link swap. We just change I's labor J to a new labor L. We're re removing the link IJ and adding a new link IL, just change I's labor J to L and such link swap increase aggregate action if the centrality of the old labor is smaller than the new labor. And from here, once you, uh, you are familiar with nested split graph, it's very easy to see that uh, this glory implies that the most active network is 
next display graph. Since in next display graph, the players with the nodes with highest uh, blast key centrality will be connected. And this is colory one. Young Sun, can I quickly ask a question? Mm -hmm. yes, just to clarify. So mm -hmm. um, the set of agents, this is going to the equal, uh, sort of equivalence between structural intervention and characteristic intervention. Mm -hmm. Does it have to be the same set of agents on which you want to consider the structural intervention and the characteristic intervention? Or could I work with different sets of agents in the two operations? Okay. The, okay. The corresponding outcome equivalent characteristic intervention is endogenously determined. And by this equation, the structure intervention targets on the player who involved in the, the structure intervention, the characteristic intervention targeting on the player who involved in the structure intervention, which means that the player whose neighbors does not change in the structure intervention, their characteristic will not be changed in the corresponding characteristic intervention. Have I make this clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Mm. Okay, let me introduce two applications. The first one is the key group motivated by the increased network, as I said, since the government, since the limited pol police, police, limited police resources, resources, the government can only arrest a part of, uh, a subset of uh, criminals rather than all of them. And who should be uh, who should be arrested in order to minimize the aggregate uh, criminal activities in the society? So this is a structural intervention, change the network from G to a subset of the network formed by the players, formed by the criminals, remain uh, <coughs> formed by the remaining criminals. And the equilibrium, the equilibrium activities, the criminal activities is changed accordingly. This is the key group problem. The, uh, the social planner just identifying a set of criminals uh, whose cardinality is smaller than K to minimize the, uh, to minimize the equilibrium activity of the post intervene uh, of the post intervened network. And the group S solving the problem above is called key group. This problem is analyzed by Blaster et al. in 2010 in a, a JEA paper. Um, they define the intercentrality of group directly as the net of aggregate centralities, net of aggregate centralities before and after <coughs> intervening. They define the intercentrality directly in this form. And uh, the intercentrality of group measure the impact of removal of group S on aggregate uh, activities. And just note that the intercentralities summarize the direct impact in the sense that the criminals who are arrested, they are inactive. So just, um, uh, just pre preclude their activities. And another is indirect impacts, uh, which accounts for the influence of the arrested criminals on, uh, on others. Um, here, NEMA 3, we provide a close form of the intercentrality of group by utilizing the centrality or indexes in the original network G. This is the uh, this is the intercentrality of group A represented by the indexes in original network G. Uh, in particular, when S is a singleton, and the intercentrality of group A the uh, yields to the intercentrality of node proposed by the econometrica paper. 
Let me show you the intuition of the three here. And let me illustrate how convenience once we translate the structural intervention to characteristic intervention by this four node example. This is the original network formed by four nodes. And suppose a structural intervention removes node four. So the remaining network is a triangle consists of three nodes. And in fact, such, in fact, such structural intervention is outcome equivalent to a characteristic intervention that change node force characteristic by delta, four, delta theta four star. And we claim that the critical value of delta theta four star is picked such that, uh, such that the uh, player force equilibrium choice after the characteristic intervention equals to zero. So we just pick a, a critical value of characteristic intervention to make player four inactive to replicate the structure intervention that removes player four. And here you can see before is player force uh, equilibrium choice before intervention. M44 is the sensitivity, M44 is the sensitivity of player force uh, equilibrium behavior corresponding to his characteristic multiplied by the characteristic intervention. And we just select delta theta four such that after the characteristic intervention, player four is inactive to replicate the impact of structure intervention that removes node four. And it's easy to show delta, four, delta theta four star equals to negative B4 over M44. This is the outcome equivalent characteristic intervention. And the group case is a straightforward extension of a singleton case, mm, just the uh, inverse of MSS multiply the centrality of the removed uh, group. Mm. Okay, this is the translating between the structure intervention and the characteristic intervention to derive the key group index to derive the intercentrality of groups. Uh, this is the property of- uh, Can I ask a quick question actually? Uh, so uh, in your analysis, um, uh, you have uh, a structural intervention in mind and given that structural intervention, you're saying that we can then have a characteristic intervention that will give us the identical result. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just thinking from a practical application, suppose you know uh, your characteristic might be something exogenous and difficult mm -hmm. to change. So in a practical application, it might be that I want to go in the reverse direction. So I want to have an intervention. I know a characteristic intervention is hard, but it's easy for me to knock somebody out of a network. So is it possible the other way as well that given a characteristic intervention, is there a corresponding structural one uh, which will give me the same outcome? From here, it seems okay. that you are that fixed point equation means that a structural leads you to an equivalent characteristic. Uh, I just mm -hmm. wanted to know if it also uh, uh, holds the other way around, which is I can't do anything with you exogenously given characteristics. If you're innately criminal, mm. I can't make you you know suddenly into a saint. But maybe I can completely knock you out of a network, um, which will have the same effect. So could I go in the other direction as well? So I just wanted to just quickly ask you. Okay. The statement is not true for the inverse direct, uh, direction. Um, the, the domain of characteristic intervention is, is larger than the structural intervention. Uh, for any structural intervention, we can <coughs> find a, a outcome equivalent characteristic intervention while there exists some characteristic intervention cannot replicated by a structural intervention. Okay, thank you. That's, that's good to know, thank you. Mm -hmm. Even though in unweighted network, even though in unweighted, here uh, we here we analyze undirected and unweighted 
I think the inverse still not true, even though in unweighted and uh, and directed network, the inverse does not true. Um, this is a property. This is property of uh, intercentrality of groups. Um, the four first bullet is straightforward. Remove the, the impact of removal of a larger um, a larger group uh, is is more significant than that of a smaller group. And the second bullet is interesting. It says that. Giving other parameter fixed, the intercentrality of group is monotone with respect to the um, centrality of the group players and negatively related to the uh, the intra connection among the group uh, the intra connection among the group players. And uh, let me illustrate. Uh, this point by this example. This is a regular network consists of 10 nodes. Since each node has degree three, so the Kaza Blasky centrality of each node are, uh, is identical. And to um, first, let's focus on the key player problem. The government focus on remove a single node. And since the centrality of all nodes are identical. By the second bullet of proposition two, we only need to select the nodes with smallest self loops. We only need to select the nodes with smallest self loops, and this node has the highest intercentralities. Table one uh, just uh, demonstrates three type of players. And for example, player six belongs to type one, and player five and ten belongs to uh, belongs to type two. And there are only three types of players in the single node key player problem. And we just select the player with the lowest self loops. And this player, player one, is the key players, removing who results in decreasing the aggregates activity is the most. So player one and six are the key player. And let's consider the case uh, of removing two nodes. <coughs> and from table two, we can see node two seven is a key group. Node two seven is a key group. There are two points worth noting. First, record that nodes one and six are the key players while um, neither of them belongs to key group. And this point indicates that the greedy algorithm, which selects the key player sequentially in the network, fails to identify the key group. Okay, the second point, we just compare 2, 7, and 2, 5. Now that 0. 0.5 and 0. 0.7 are identical in the sense that they have same centralities and self loops. They belong to a same type in single node case. While the intercentrality of group 27 dominates that of 25, it is because it is because uh, the bullet two of proposition two as well. It is because the uh, interconnection of 27 is much lower than that of 25. You can see 25 belongs to a same group, while 27 belongs to different different sites, and it's harder for um, for the pass uh, starting from two and um, hit node seven compared with the pass starting from two uh, hit five. So the key group uh, to specify the key group, the social planner tend to identify the players who who are located far away. Uh, this is interesting trinity, uh, this is key group problem. And okay, I have few minutes to introduce this key bridge problem, which is multi motivated by the business meeting case 
and the integration of immigrate uh, environments. Um, there are two isolated network represented by N1 and N2, and G is the network formed by the whole population. We assume the characteristics are identical. So the key bridge problem is that the social planner selects one one bridge player in each group and connects them to maximize the aggregate activity after uh, this intervention, after adding this bridge. The social planner selects one player in each group and connects them to maximize the aggregate centralities. And the pair of nodes solve this problem is called the key bridge pair. Um, this is the bridge index seems messy. Uh, doesn't matter. I will introduce the property of this uh, bridge index later. And proposition three states that the key bridge pair uh, solving the key bridge problem just maximize the bridge index. This index just rank the impact of bridges on aggregate activities. And the proof is very simple. Since adding a bridge, this intervention, only two nodes are involved in this intervention. Uh, building up a bridge, only, only two nodes involved in this intervention. So we only need to change the characteristics of these two nodes. Uh, we, need to, uh, we only need to specify the corresponding value of outcome equivalent characteristic intervention of these two nodes. And we, we need to solve this two by two linear equation system to pin down the critical value of characteristic intervention on the bridge players. And by the, uh, and then the aggregates and the aggregates, uh, the participation of aggregates, um, aggr the participation of aggregate activities is by the centralities multiplied by the interventions of the uh, of the bridge players, and it's easy to check its proportion. It's proportional to the link index, and for this link index. Um, for the link index, we can see it's negatively related to the centrality as well as self loop of the bridge players. When BJ increase, this uh, link index increase as well as MJG. Okay, so this correlate to just um, state the property of the bridge index. Mm. The first bullet says that um, the bridge index, when the fix, fixing the other parameters, the bridge index is monotone, uh, is mm, positively related to the uh, centrality of the bridge players as well as the self loop of the bridge players. So to find the key bridge player, we only need to focus on the parental frontier of Mm, plus key centrality and the self loops of the nodes. So, um, and the second bullet states that when data is sufficient small, the only the degree centrality matters. Where the bridge, the bridge, the key bridge pair consists of the players with the highest degree. This example illustrates the two points. Consider two isolated network. The first one is a hub spoke network consists of uh, one consists of eight nodes, I think, eight nodes. And the, the, the hub nodes, both the centrality and self loop of the hub nodes dominate that of NIFs. So this hub node must belong to the key bridge pair in the first network. And the second network is more complicated. In fact, a1 and A2, these two nodes dominate other nodes in terms of um, centrality and self loop. While A1 is a central node with the highest centralities, and A2 has the highest self loops. So when the social planner selects the key bridge pair, 
the, the, the social planner must balance the trade-off between the uh, self-loop and uh, centralities. And in fact, when delta is large enough, the key bridge pair is H and A2. The H and the player with the highest self-loop rather than the central player A1 as well as the key player A1 is also key player. With the decreasing of delta as this Chloride two state with the decreasing of the delta only degree centrality matters. So when delta decrease, the key bridge player changed from H A2 to H A1 since the degree centrality of A1 is larger than that of A2. This is the uh, value of the this example. Uh, when delta equals to 0 0.25, the key bridge pair is H and A2. With the decreasing of delta and H A1 become the key bridge players and the degree centrality matters. Mm -hmm. And A1 is always the central player with the highest centrality, while the self loop of A2 is larger than that of A1. Okay. Uh, that's all for this present. To conclude, we present a general approach to analyze the structure intervention and we utilize this approach to study the impact of removal of player and building up links. And this approach can be extended a little bit to, to other linear quadratic model in which the equilibrium is characterized by a function of uh, Kaza Blasky centrality. Okay, that's all. Thank you. I'm open to questions. Thank you, Yanzu. It was excellent. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you, Pro Prof. Thank you. I wish questions. I made this paper clear. <laughs> Questions for Youngson? Youngson, uh, Sabar has a question. Can we get the slides? Of course, I, I will think to the organizer later. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think the paper is online, it's an archive. Mm -hmm. so, and, uh, yeah, I mean, we already got a version. So, you know, we already got a version, but there's probably a revised version now. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think I'm probably can send the, the, the most recent version of the paper and also the slides. Uh, sure, it's sure. interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think there's a question, yeah. Can I? Go ahead. Yes. Uh, this is not my area in which I work, but first time I came to know about that the game theory could be applied into network from Professor Surjit when I invited him to a conference in 2011 and 12, and uh, uh, very eloquently presented uh, uh, the work uh, by Sen Yang. Uh, I I'm curious, being a, uh, interested in the game theory, I'm curious about a couple of uh, fundamental things which keep uh, maybe they are somewhere invisible in the paper, but uh, I couldn't figure out whether there is an assumption about the players or agents are rational or not. That's the one thing. The second thing is, what is the information, information structure? It is a complete perfect information or asymmetric information or imperfect information uh, with the agents. And thirdly, whether the players are finite or continuum players, because the uh, the whole game will outcome of the game will change if there are a continuum of players game because information disappears in the continuum of player games, but in the infinite in the finite number of games you can have really penalize and reward the players, and finally whether it is possible to separate the pooling equilibria from the separating equilibria because where the characteristics can mix in the pooling equilibria and in the separating equilibria you can isolate which are the most wanted criminals or less serious criminals 
whether they can be separated or they will be mixed together and difficult to identify. So these were the things were bothering me. And if we could answer those, that's fine. Otherwise, I'll read the paper. Okay, thanks, thanks. Uh, the game is complete information game. The ne network structure as well as the characteristics of the players are common knowledge. Uh, common knowledge for the players as well as the social planner. So after the intervention, after the intervention, the structure and the characteristic are still common knowledge among them. And the uh, and the, the 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 final question is pooling equilibrium and separate equilibrium effects. Uh, this paper, uh, uh, this paper uh, shows that the game has a unique equilibrium, uh, which is characterized by the uh, when 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 delta is not too large. The game, this paper blaster at all in 2006, the game has a unique equilibrium uh, categorized by the centrality. So there's no uh, distinguish between pooling and separating equilibrium. And yeah, I, so this is the pooling equilibrium. One more question that is left is whether mm -hmm. finite number of players or continuous number of players. Okay, it's finite number of players since we need uh, network structure G represented by a uh, n by n matrix. Once the players are in uh, infinite, then we cannot get the matrix G, and the whole analysis is not is not work. I have one problem with the complete and perfect information game is then what is left for imagination? Sorry, what? If everybody is... knows everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. What are we, you know? So, what is the purpose of uh, the uh, for the policy makers or social planner? If the agents know everything, the characteristics and the game, then what the equilibrium mm -hmm. is going to help? There must be some mm -hmm. some observation which you observe imperfectly. It may be complete information, but there must be some imperfection in the observation where there is a deviation you know in the each players mm -hmm. so why you didn't introduce some imperfection in the game okay i understand your question in uh okay mm -hmm. think about it i'm not saying you got to answer me now but <laughs> <laughs> if you introduce something that you observe, but some people observe imperfectly. Mm -hmm. Characteristics or, you know, like matching oh. game. You know, the well-known matching game for which uh, Professor, it's uh, mm -hmm. Professor Shapley got the Nobel Prize, mm -hmm. you know? I Actually, know, his know. game is also complete and perfect information. But if you introduce mm -hmm. some imperfection in the observation, you observe, but do so mm -hmm. imperfectly. And mm -hmm. then you can lead to some game, you know? Uh, outcome. Okay. Yeah, I think there is a literature in network games about when you have incomplete information about the either the theta, the characteristics, or the network structures. Certainly, in that kind of games, you can. Uh, I think that Yves Zeno has a paper, a nice paper, to show that the equilibrium is going to be can be written as a uh, some kind of a combination of these kinds of Banach centralities. So basically, if that's the case, then we can still apply our results. So basically, our results can be interpreted as uh, compare statics of this Keynes Bonacci centrality with back to the theta, which is well studied, but the non, uh, in addition to uh, respect to the, uh, the, G, the network structures. So once that part is understood, we can just uh, extend this analysis in, uh, in various dimensions. We mentioned several extensions to uh, multiple activities. Right, maybe some of the audits may be interesting in the uh, multi multi layer networks. So that's one direction you can uh, you can extend. Um, yeah, uh, let me tell you that. Simplify. The if I may also add to your response. I think since your purpose of your paper is comparative statics, right? To do comparative statics on the baseline model, and the baseline model is known, 
then assume, because what essentially what they're doing is saying, taking the equilibrium of the baseline model, if I change things, what do I expect to find? So in some ways, it's a methodological uh, so approach. Whereas if they were doing an application, they probably have to introduce uncertainty. I agree, yeah. yeah. Comparative statistics is fine, but I think how does it help to the policymaker or a social planner? The, the one thing I can tell you is that uh, to, to model a, a game of incomplete information is very difficult. And Harsiani, I think, uh, work on that. When and they simplified economists because are not mathematically so much trained, and they have simplified it uh, by one paper in 1970 or 72 by Milgram, Milgram and Robert in Econometrica. And he changed asymmetric game to a game of complete but imperfect information. And it becomes difficult, easier to solve that game rather than the game of incomplete information. So that is what considering, that's my suggestion. It's not my area, but comparative statistics is fine. There's no problem. And you have done a wonderful job, you know. So if there are any other questions we'll take, but otherwise we have actually run out of time, right? So it's already uh, 10 minutes past our usual time. So I'll take one last question, otherwise, we will close. All right. Thank you, Youngson. Thank, Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> My pleasure. Okay. So, see you. See you, yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for coming.